All right, our question today comes from one of our viewers who has reached out. Um, they're really struggling and they have asked, is it possible that some people just simply cannot do without meat? They've said that they tried several times and that the cravings for meat are just so strong that they always end up going back to eating it. Absolutely, I have nothing but compassion for that person. When I stopped eating meat, I had meat cravings for years after that. Uh, absolutely, it's a real thing. Does that mean we homo sapiens need to be eating animal flesh? No, it does not. Uh, what is it? What are we really looking at? Well, unlike every other primate on this on this planet, unlike every gorilla mother and bonobo mother uh, who's nursing their little baby, at age six months, when the baby's still nursing on the breast, six months old, with all the love in the parent's heart, your mother didn't know, my mother didn't know, with all the love in their heart, at age six months, that jar of baby lamb, baby chicken, baby turkey is open. And from that point on, three times a day, animal flesh gets slathered on that child's intestinal tract, all through infancy, through toddler years, by age three or four, they're in a fast food restaurant eating their Happy Meals, all through their, their childhood, their adolescence, their puberty, their teen years, their 20s, their 30s. You eat animal flesh three times a day for 30 years. You're going to develop a dependency on it. What kind of dependency? Well, you're biting into a piece of animal muscle. Now, that means you're flooding your bloodstream and your tissues with muscle-based nutrients like carnitine, creatine, uh, fragments of myoglobin, etc. Your body makes these molecules. You make all the carnitine you need. You make all the creatine you need. But if it's coming in preformed in your food every few hours since infancy, What's your body going to do? Well, it's going to say, yeah, gee, we got, there's always carnitine in the blood, there's always creatine, but we don't need to be making this stuff. So if that baby's going to downregulate its own production of carnitine, creatine. That child's going to downregulate their own uh, production of it, which is okay if it's coming in constantly, as it is in eating the standard Western diet uh, with three meat-based meals a day. You always have that stuff in your blood. Now, it's not really a good thing. It leads to clogged arteries and colon cancer and all that. But uh, as far as the production of these molecules, your body is at peace with it because your food supply keeps these molecules in the bloodstream all the time. Then the plant-based light goes on. You see a movie like Forks Over Knives. You take our plant-based nutrition course. You read John Robbins' Diet for America book. Ding, go plant-based. And that's wonderful. It helps your arteries, helps the animals, helps the world. It's a great thing to do. But what have you done? That steady supply of carnitine, creatine from that meat-based diet, gone. Now, you got to make all your own right now. you got to gear up your liver enzymes, your muscle enzymes. you got to start cranking out, uh, unblock those genes that have, that have been shut down as far as the enzyme uh, function goes to make these molecules. Most people can gear up pretty quickly, and most people can make that to a transition. But some folks might take them a long time, might take them months and months and months. And it certainly took me months and months. And during that time, you draw down on your own stores of carnitine, creatine, et cetera, and you're not feeling so great, and you get these cravings. And then you eat some meat, and that carnitine, creatine floods through your tissues. Oh, I feel great, man. I'm vegan, schmegan. I'm a carnivore, man. I need my meat. But what are we observing? This is not normal human physiology. This is an acquired dependency created by feeding a human infant animal flesh three times a day since infancy. Yep, you can create a dependency on animal muscle, but so what? That, that's not normal human physiology. No gorilla does that, no bonobo does that. <clears throat> and we've got this dependency here, and the person pointedly says, when I try and just power past it, the cravings got so strong, I've got, to, uh, I've got to have some meat, and they do. So what are they to do? they really want to get on with their plant-based evolution, they, they should do so, but they have to give, be compassionate to themselves and realize the predicament. It's a physiologic dependency. They didn't ask for it. It's the hand they've been dealt with. So they're going to need to be patient. And there's someone who might need to eat a small amount of animal flesh once a week or twice a week, 
Uh, and, uh, and you find the smallest amount that you think your body requires. Uh, and either the cell you have a little bit on Monday, a little bit on Saturday, and that's it. And the rest of the meals, well, there's 21 meals in a week, right? Three times a day for seven days, there's 21 meals. They should all be whole food plant-based, every one of them. But if, if, if in two of those 21 meals, you need to include a little piece of animal, food, okay, fine. And then what you do is the weeks go by and the months go by, you start stretching out the interval in between instead of Mondays and Thursdays, you have it Mondays and, and Saturdays, and then Mondays are just once a week, and then once every other week, and then slowly, slowly, slowly tiptoe off of it. And if you take your time and give yourself lots of, uh, <clears throat> and have lots of patience with yourself, and you may wean yourself, and it might take you six months, 12 months, 18 months, it's fine. As long as your diet basically has gone to whole food plant base with every meal, but some of them have a little bit of animal flesh, the animals will understand. Believe me, you're going to be so much healthier eating, getting your meat eating down to twice a week as opposed to twice a day, like most people consume, that everyone's going to benefit. You'll benefit, the animals will benefit, the, uh, the planet will benefit, everyone will benefit if they got it down to twice a week. So, so that's the general advice. Find the smallest amount you think your body requires. Eat it as seldom as you can and slowly and wean yourself off of it. And if you do that and give yourself plenty of time, uh, most people should be able to, to make that transition. Hopefully it won't, won't take an excessive long time, but that's the way to handle it. So don't beat up on yourself. Just work with it and keep your eye on the prize of a, of a completely plant-based diet. That's really where you want to go. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.